Hey guys, in this episode of Jeff's House, I'm going to continue on where I finished off last time and um, first off, let's start off with some grouting. Okay, because as you can see, I've finished off all the tiling and got everything ready to go. Uh, and I've gone through and I've cleaned up the whole room, so I've had to go over, wipe everything down, all the bits of tile adhesive that was sticking through the edges, I had to go through and dig them all out and just, just get everything ready so that I can get a nice, even, clean coat of grout on. So, um, First coat of grout is all on, and um, tip the young players. I, uh, I was helping a mate out doing his uh, first tiling job, and uh, we did the grouting, and I left him with it, left him, so I showed him the basics and left him with it. This was on really fine mosaics, and it was floor to ceiling, and they were really expensive glass mosaics, and he let, left it to set overnight that I'll come back and do it in the morning. And he spent, he and his wife spent uh, two or three days scraping all of the uh, the grout back off. So, um, <laughs> tip the young players, wipe it off while it's still wet. All right, so uh, that's the uh, first wipe down. And I usually like to give it another second go over just before I uh, leave it. But that's got rid of most of the, uh, the solid stuff. And then uh, that's pretty much the walls grab. Okay, with the grouting done, it's now time to get in here into the laundry. I've already screened the floor, so now I'm just going to go through and start tiling. I was in bed last night and I was thinking, I didn't, did I? And yeah, I did. I made a stupid rookie error. I've nicely tiled this uh, floor in the laundry up against the inward opening laundry door, didn't I? And I didn't double check the height of the laundry door. And these hinges are not the type that you can actually pop out, so uh, I can't sort of knock the pin out of them. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really messy. Uh, I've got to work out a way to somehow get this door off because the door is stuck. This pin is capped top and bottom, and I may have to cut one of the uh, ends off of each of the pins and then try and knock the pin out because otherwise I'm not getting the door open because I can't get it open to undo the hinges to get the door off to cut the bottom of it up ah! so after cutting one of those hinges apart I realized I don't have to cut the hinges apart because they actually have like a um, a stopper on one end and a, and a little um, a little plug on the other end. So um, I could actually knock the pins out. So I should have tried that first before I got the angle grinder out and wrecked one of the hinges. But uh, either way, the door is off. And uh, yeah, don't do that. It's really dumb. All right. So now at least I can um, finish my tiling and then I can trim my door and uh, everything should work. All right, and I am finally at painting stage. I've just 
cutting the, uh, the corners. And I'm going to try a trick that my brother put me on to. Um, is actually um, to speed things up, painting ceilings and, uh, or, and, and also for undercoating, is using a really long nap roller for the cornices and uh, cheating because you can use the roller by rolling the cornice but then also you can go side to side and uh, do it a lot quicker. So I'm going to see how it goes. Okay, all the ceilings throughout the uh, extension are all now painted, so now it's time to put some colour on the walls. And um, that means um, that there has to be, obviously I have to cut in around the corners and around other bits and pieces. And I watch a lot of these renovating shows where people are actually using tape around the edges and stuff like that. I think that's tedious. A, it takes a lot of time. B, the tape is really expensive for what it is. And you still get bleeds and you still end up peeling off the paint from the, uh, the stuff you stuck it onto and you're just chasing your tail. It is so much quicker and easier to just cut it in and you don't have to be super steady hand. Just when you're using the brush, don't, don't try and cut it in like that. Cut it in with it on the edge of the brush. Another quick little tip. Um, this is one uh, my brother got as, as a painter. As, I get an old paint tin or something as your um, working can and you stick your thumb thumb into the, uh, the hook and your fingers underneath and you can hold the can like that and only leave, you know, four or five centimetres at the most paint in the bottom, generally even less than that. Um, just so you've got just enough that you can sit the brush in and lean it against the edge and always hold it by the same side and as you dip, you dip, slap it against the uh, opposite side and then draw it out so that way you've got loaded paint on one side and clean on the other so you get a nice even flow that seems to work it works well it's a, a simple little thing and then also because you're only wiping on one side of the can when you put it down you put the brush against the edge of the can and no paint on your fingers no paint on the handle of the brush so um, simple little tip that's quite handy so uh, let's start cutting in so as I, as I said, the, the slap and drop. And there we go. Really easy. If you can see that in the camera, but I've uh, used my laser level and I'm marking out a line on the wall. I'm going to measure up my dado rails now because I have to paint this room and um, the bottom is going to be going a different colour than the top. So I'll mark out the midpoint of my dado rails, which um, when you put it up later you'll be able to see. But uh, basically, I'm going to have 900 dado rails. So I'll uh, mark 900 all the way around the room and um, start painting. Alright guys, that's it for another episode of Jeff's House. Uh, all the painting is now done and finished. So uh, next week I'll come back and I'll be uh, laying the floor and starting to fit up uh, some of the laundry and the bathroom. So um, until next time, see you guys.